Hey everybody, welcome back to the Motor One channel. We're excited today to continue our video series that we've been doing lately with designers. And like we explained in the last video, the concept here is really simple. Uh, we're taking some of our favorite automotive renderings, these design sketches that we have sent over to us almost every week, and we are presenting them to the people that actually design the cars. Um, and today we're talking with Ford and Chris Stevens, who works on the Mustang program with Ford. Chris, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me, Clint. So before we get into the renderings and talk about some of the fun, just crazy stuff people send us over, can you tell everybody just briefly um, what you do at Ford and kind of what your day-to-day -day looks like? Sure. Um, so I'm basically an exterior senior designer, uh, which basically means I, I'm, I develop sketches first pen on paper, I scan those in, Photoshop render them, try to get stuff picked, and then as soon as it gets picked, we develop um, surface with clay modelers, digital modelers, engineers, and we basically just get together as a team and create a beautiful product. Now this is the fun part. You have no clue what I'm about to throw at you. Um, we have three different vehicles that, like I said, uh, just renderings that people have sent in to us. And we're gonna start with one that's actually not all that new. We're starting off weird, right? And you're like, it's a Mustang, but it's also not a Mustang. Yeah. Uh, Motor One thought this up in 2016, and we're just basically calling it the Lincoln Base Mustang. So you can see it uses the previous generation design language with that butterfly grill. It's got right. a little MKZ going on with it. Um, but yeah. when this thing came out, people went crazy over it. It's, it's interesting because honestly, I could imagine Lincoln it would be awesome if they if they did come out with a product that competed with like Aston Martin, you know, and and uh, or even like the Jaguar uh, F Typer. It's it's it would be cool to have a V8 rear wheel drive like exotic, more premium v product, and that's why I think I would get excited looking at this immediately, and I, I could see why people would would be like, yeah, I want I want the the next, I want something fancier than the Mustang, then go that route, you know? Right. What favorite and least favorite thing about it? Um, I do like the everything that's Mustang about it. And then I think as soon as you get to the uh, the Lincoln fascia, it seems like the, the headlamp brow doesn't really match up to the bone line that goes along the, bone, the body side. But then, you know, it, it, they did a good job just uh, blocking it in and making something that has a, an, a very impactful first punch, you know? This was actually my favorite angle. And then it made me think for a long time, a singular light bar across the back of a Mustang wouldn't yeah. be a bad thing. You know, it's, it's, it would be cool. I think it's definitely part of the Lincoln DNA. Um, but I think if we, if we are going to make something that's going to battle those, those cars that I mentioned, yeah. before, I think you could get, you could get even lower to the ground. You could drop all that mass that's above the wheels and just really slam it. So it feels more exotic and more expensive. I feel sure. like, this right now, it, it feels like it would be a lot of like, like hand hand me down parts from the Mustang program. And be like, here you go, Lincoln, you know, and slap a Lincoln badge on it. But I think if this were the case, I, I would actually go full out. In a hypothetical world, what engine are you putting world. in this thing? What would be best for you? In a hypothetical world, uh, what was the question? What would be your your powertrain of choice? You going manual with this, or because it's a Lincoln, are you sticking with an automatic transmission, uh, EcoBoost V8? You know that it's funny. I, I was always uh, stick on everything, st stick everything. I, I want to shift gears. It's and then as soon as I sat in on the GT five hundred and I felt that like ten speed auto and how fast it was going into gears, it sounded like a supercar. And it immediately I was like, wow, this sounds expensive. It feels expensive. And if I had the GT five hundred, I wouldn't mind having just you know just paddle shifting. So I, honestly, I would if this is a Lincoln product, I would go with just exactly what the GT500 has. Got it. So the GT500 convinced you a little bit that yep. now we're at the point where a DCT is pretty hard to beat. Yep. This one, I think you can kind of say like, okay, maybe in a hypothetical world, it could happen. This next one, I think I'm actually just gonna shut up and let you react <laughs> to it. I immediately think of that, um, yeah, that one car, the Rally Fighter, uh, but basically like a, a an off-road Mustang. You know, that's, there was actually a movie a, a long time ago that came out. I forgot which which one it was. It might have been one of the James Bonds where they jacked up a Mustang and then right. Um, I, I forgot which which movie it was, but yeah, 
it's it definitely would be a cool project to have and a cool uh you know cool thing to drive around in the dunes but so i want to make sure i give image credit to you can see it on screen yeah. too but uh one of the good friends of the site x tommy design did this um yes. this one we didn't commission ourselves but when we wrote about it on the site the headline that ran with it said so bad it's good and then we put in the yeah. subhead that you can't even pretend you don't like this and there's something yeah. about that that just works and if you look at the front face to see you know everything that we know about a mustang grill and swapped out for a raptor does any of that work for you or are you not about it honestly um i don't see like ford coming out with a product like it's a little packed together like this but honestly as like a, <laughs> as a as a sema project go for it man like that thing looks fun to drive and i'm sure somebody would enjoy buying that thing so and uh, it doesn't look bad you know all the all the parts like the Raptor front bumper and the, the Mustang silhouette jacked up on this, you know, cool lifted up car. It looks pretty sweet, man. I, honestly, I would dry, I wouldn't mind having it for the weekend. I'll recycle my earlier question. Favorite thing and least favorite thing about it. I'd say my favorite thing is um, probably just the silhouette. I would say I, there's something really beautiful about that long hood and that nice cabin that's sitting more towards the more rear bias, making it look like it's very rear wheel driven. Uh, and then second thing I'd, I'd say, I love the the front end. Um, it's it, the fact that they put the Ford in the grill looks pretty cool. Right. I love the, uh, I, I love that the front skid plate. Uh, I always love off-road vehicles, especially like the Raptor. It just, uh, it looks capable. So it, it looks like it, it can do the part, you know? So that's what I like about it. Um, let's get into the last one now. All right, I'm gonna hit you with this one and see what you think. This one I'm a little nervous about, but I saved what I consider to be the best for last. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you know that car. <laughs> All right, well, hold on. That's one of my favorite views. Well, that was anticlimactic. Wow. So I think the Motor One, we did this a couple of months ago. And I remember when we had the first sketch sent over to us, we printed it out and we ran around the office just showing it off to people. And the amount of laughs we got, I can't even tell you. But this is obviously, we call it the Shelb E, which is hilarious. But it's the mashup that everybody's kind of thinking about of what happens if you took a Shelby version of a Mach E. What are your thoughts? You know what's crazy is that this kind of shows how strong the Mustang DNA is. The mm -hmm. fact that you can grab like a, a the front end off the 500 and slap it right onto the Mach-E and it actually looks like palatable and looks like, wow, that's, that could be a car. That shows how good that like our, our DNA is. Like it's crazy because everything's got that same feeling, you know? You look at things probably different than most people in that you have an obvious ability to sketch this out and see immediately the things you like and don't like. So what jumps out at you is like, oh, that's actually a pretty cool design cue. I guess when you look at this initially, do you say yikes or do you say I can work with this? It, just, it looks like the next the next step up, you know, the, the bad boy of the Mach-E if, if they ever did, you know, a more a faster, more powerful Mach-E. You spent a lot of time designing the front face of the GT500 to be perfect, I imagine. What are your thoughts with taking the Mach-E grill, um, I guess grill, quote unquote, and then shoving it in that GT500 grill? It, it works. It's, it's, it's blacked out, so you, you can't really, you can honestly substitute it easily because it's just, uh, it all reads as one nice black graphic. And that's kind of what the... Uh, GT500 was is this black, the first black nose Mustang that came out that really just shows I'm breathing in all this air. So it's, it's, it's cool. What do you immediately not like about it? Um, I'd say the first thing I, I see is that the same, the Mustang always has this one line that goes around the car and mm. that, that brow line leads right into, doesn't lead into the bone lines along the side. And uh, so I would want to see all those kind of get lined up. So I, if, if this were the case, I'd probably grab that bone line on the body side and just raise it up. So the, the headlamp the in, in, like uh, indexes that. Is it funny to you that there's a hood scoop? You know what? No, it's if there. <laughs> Maybe that works for Arrow. Yeah. 
Maybe it plants, um, the, plants the, the front end down, lets the let air pass through it. Is there ever a time when you're developing a car uh, and you're allowed to just go absolutely crazy, like knowing that a sketch of a car is never going to make production, like something as crazy as a shelled E. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Do you ever get in that design process just a chance to go completely wild? Um, it's funny because every, I feel like every program, they ask us, go, go, go more, go further, you know? And that's, and that's, I feel like that's kind of the motto of Ford. So it's like, what was, last year what was crazy is actually pretty normal this year you know you look at what other i mean you look at what elon musk did with the cyber truck yeah it's mm -hmm. when he first came out with it it's uh you know everyone was like what the hell is that then as you look at it you're like this guy's a genius he, he straight up just shocked the system and he he might have even started a trend who knows do you get just fans of Mustang, people that do some level of design work, do they send you sketches? Do they send you idea boards and things like that? Um, yeah, I actually get um, a lot of uh, a lot of kids that were on the same path I was. They're going to design school and want to be a car designer. Um, they do come to me. I, I do teach at College for Creative Studies and I teach cool. visual communication. So um, and I, I was, I was one of those guys back then. And I'm, I, I reached out to my favorite designers and I asked, what can I do? Like Randall Smock at Honda. I was like, I went and visited the studio. I was like, what can I do to be a car designer? And, and, uh, yeah, I get, I get like images of, um, college for creative studies just did a Mustang sponsored project. And I was able to kind of, I had a lot of those students in my class and they came up with really beautiful ideas of what Mustang could be. So I get yeah. a lot of those. Yeah. Um, if you were to do something just absolutely crazy with a Mustang concept or a Mustang render, what would it be? Would it be closest to like the Raptor that we went over, something with the Mach-E or even the, the the Lincoln design, something as, I guess, elegant as that? Um, you know, for fun, it would it would always be fun to do. Um, I, I always get a, a lot of the kids actually did uh, mid-engine Mustangs, you know, and I see a lot of those renderings up on Instagram and and I would love, to, I would love to do one of my own just for fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, it's, it's not part of the brand DNA and it's nothing, nothing like that might ever come out. All right. Well, Chris Stevens, the exterior designer for uh, the Mustang program. Thanks for being with us today, man. And uh, thanks for taking time out of your quarantine day to talk a little design with us. And uh, we look forward to see what you have coming down the pipe in the future. Thanks, Clint. Thanks, Motor One. I appreciate it. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks.